expert and scholar who presented the claimed keynote address at the Nelson Mandela Memorial Lecture this year. He's known across the continent for his thought-provoking and hard-hitting stance on matters affecting Africa. His oratory prowess allows him the rare ability to pronounce candidly and courageously on the leadership challenges facing our continent. Our foreign editor, that's Sophie McQuena, spoke to him earlier. Let's listen in. Is Africa rising? Africa is rising. If you are a very keen observer, you can begin to see that Africa is rising. I say that because there are certain things that have happened in the recent past which demonstrate that Africa and African leaders have realized that certain architecture must be put in place. Agenda 2063 is such architecture. I can see the reformation of the African Union which is being led by President Paul Kagame and the engagements that Africa has with the rest of the world are beginning to suggest to me that Africa recognizes that she must begin to take leadership and to define her own agenda even as she engages with the world. It is not going to be rapid uh, development, it is not going to be dramatic, it is slow and painful because there are a lot of headwinds and that is what we must work to reduce in order to ensure that that rise is a lot more dramatic to match the needs of the people of Africa. Let's look at the recent development mm -hmm. All our leaders going to Beijing, China, uh, attending this uh, FOCAC meeting. Some people are saying, why go to China? Why not have this meeting on the continent? And this is a clear sign that uh, China's intention is to colonize the continent. What's your response? I'm one of the people who has actually been saying that, one of the people who have been saying that it is wrong for that meeting to have been held in Beijing. But the old saying is that he who pays the piper calls the tune. I would have been very happy if that meeting were held in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and there was a Chinese delegation so that the plight of Africa and the needs of Africa are discussed on the African continent. But that is water under the bridge. What we must then do is to ask ourselves how are such engagements important for the people of Africa? China has defined what she needs and what she wants and she has identified that Africa has resources both in terms of mineral and other agricultural resources and that Africa constitutes a big market. I, um, I can tell you that China is now exporting fish to Africa, exporting electronic material to Africa, exporting uh, raw material, not raw material, but textile material to Africa. The question is, what is Africa exporting to China beyond primary products? And when China is handing down these many loans, including the promised $60 billion to African countries, what will she get in return? My view is we must begin to ask the foundational question, what are we doing to ensure that China does not run roughshod over African countries and that there is indeed an engagement that is mutually beneficial? Currently the trade balance is in favor of China. Do you think we have capacity or we have that capacity as a continent, particularly our leaders, to be brave enough to address this problem of trade in balance. It must be addressed and I know that there are a number of African leaders who are already beginning to say that that is critical. I've heard President Paul Kagame say that, President Akufo Addo is saying that, President John, John Pombe Magufuli and I think even President Cyril Ramaphosa and quite a number of leaders whom are not named who are saying that if we are going to engage with China in a manner that is sustainable and for the benefit of the people of Africa, we must ensure that we reduce the trade imbalance and that requires certain actions on the part of African countries. Let's look at the minerals that we are exporting like Colton or rare earth. 
that is being exported to China and is an integral component in electronic material. Why can't we have those factories located in Africa so that Africa also develops our own industries? Why can't we ensure that there is transfer of technology, particularly when we are beginning to talk about the fourth industrial revolution? Is there genuine and legitimate transfer of technology? Why are we allowing unnecessary Chinese labor to be working in infrastructure projects while we have our own engineers and our own people who can do that. Once again, I must reiterate that it is incumbent upon political leadership and leadership in business and leadership in private sector and in public sector to make demands of our leaders that if this kind of relationship goes on unchecked, then China will begin to control our economies in a negative way. Well, you can catch that full interview on The Globe tonight. That's on at 10 p.m. right here on the SABC News Channel. Well, let's move on to some other news now. Tourism Minister.